Hey everyone, it is Danny, and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is currently there, and we'll also briefly talk about what's in the Eastern Pacific. And we're going to take a look at conditions across the Atlantic, as well as what our models are expecting in terms of uh, potential development for the next week or so. And so, before I go into details. <music> Alright, so let us start off with the Eastern Pacific. So we have a single disturbance as of right now in the Eastern Pacific and things have been pretty quiet there because of course conditions are not very favorable. And so we're seeing that this disturbance, we don't have an X and the reason for that is because that low pressure area has not yet developed. However, it is expected to do so and once we have development of that low pressure area and favorable conditions are likely to persist ahead of it, then this chance will gradually uh, keep increasing and so as of right now there is a single 60% chance that we could potentially have a tropical system developing from this. Fortunately, seeming as though it is not going to be a threat to land, and if we do have development of a tropical cyclone and it achieves tropical storm status, then it will occur the name Pamela, which is the next name to be used for the Eastern Pacific hurricane season. So over in the Atlantic, we are way ahead in terms of named storms. Just one name is left on the list, uh, while for the Eastern Pacific, they're just at the letter P. All right, so now let us go ahead and take a look at the satellite imagery of the Atlantic. All right, and so we currently have uh, three tropical waves across the basin. We have one that is located off the coast of Africa, one that is located, you could say, to the uh, east of the Windward Islands, and we also have one in the Caribbean. And so as of right now, we definitely see a lot of moisture as a result of that wave making its way across the Caribbean. And some areas such as, I can say for a fact here in Jamaica, some areas had a lot of rainfall, especially yesterday. Uh, it was quite continuous as a result of all this moisture in the region. And in terms of this wave that is located out in the main development region. So we've had GFS as well as other models expect that this might uh, become something but as of right now, it is not marked as an area of interest by the National Hurricane Center. But we're going to be taking a look at conditions and see uh, what possibilities are there for us to have development of that wave. But before we go to conditions, let us take a look at that lingering disturbance. So as of right now, that disturbance is located uh, just to the east of Florida. And so we're seeing here that it is given a low 10% chance to potentially develop. So this disturbance has been here for quite a while. And so fortunately, it's not expected to make its way into the US. Probably when it's making its way by, it probably induces a bit of inclement weather along the coastal areas. But nothing major is expected. Nothing out of the north Normal. So this is going to be making its way by but once it makes its way just off the coast of the Carolinas right there where you have that shaded region that is where we could potentially see a bit of development with this uh, but the good news is that it is already going to be hidden out to sea so it won't be anything of much significance once it is going to be there even if it does develop into a tropical cyclone and so now let's go ahead and take a look at conditions so first up we have the ocean temperature map and so ocean temperatures are relatively warm across sections of the basin especially the northwestern caribbean portions of the gulf and also uh, in the vicinity of the bahamas so ocean temperatures are definitely supportive to uh, enable tropical cyclones to develop but the next thing is that uh, even though ocean temperatures might be so conducive other factors have to be as well so let us go on to them so let us go ahead and take a look at the wind shear map and so we're seeing that the different colors they indicate the favorability of the shear we have the green that means that the shear is favorable uh, this is what is a conducive environment that is going to enable uh, any tropical cyclones that are trying to develop to intensify and grow so the neutral shear is uh, marked by yellow and then we have the unfavorable shear which is marked by the red and that means that conditions are definitely uh, too hostile to, to enable tropical cyclones to develop or intensify so what happens is that the unfavorable shear it is too strong and of course it cut off the thunderstorms associated with systems and prevents them from intensifying and growing so it is the opposite of favorable shear of course 
And so now let's see what is going on in terms of the Saharan dust. So the different colors here indicate how dense the dust is. So that light yellow, uh, going to that very bright orange, it indicates that the dust is not very, very dense. But as we head to the darker orange, the red, that pink shade, a lot of Saharan dust present. And that is a very hostile environment. It prevents tropical cyclones from intensifying or developing because... Uh, there is no moisture there. So wherever you have a lot of dry air, there is no moisture and or tropical cyclones They need moisture in order to Develop and so we have that Saharan dust that is continuously affecting portions of the Eastern Caribbean Some of it is making its way a little bit more to the west So sections such as most of the Lesser Antilles, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico Are probably experiencing some hazy skies now and then as a result of the Saharan dust And so out in the main development region in terms of that wave there Once we have all that dry air infiltrating the system Then it is really going to stifle it and prevent it from intensifying much so that seems to be what is going to be taking place because we have this other pocket of Saharan dust that is making its way westward. So we really have to wait and see what's going to be the outcome with it, but things are looking quite hostile ahead of that disturbance. So now let us go ahead and see what our models are expecting. So we are going to be taking a look at the GFS and the ICON. And so first up is the GFS. So this is a map that shows the isobars and the isobars are lines of equal pressure, they are the black lines, and when you see them being in a circular manner with the pressure below 1013 millibars, that is a low pressure system and can be your tropical cyclone. So that is what we're looking for here. So this is by Monday the 11th of October, and so here we have GFS showing a 1006 millibar low pressure system well to the east of the Windward Islands. So that is probably what was associated with uh, that tropical wave that is currently out in the main development region as we had to Tuesday the 12th of the month we see that we have a 10 10 millibar low pressure system uh, the system is making its way to the northwest and so this is just what the GFS model is showing so we also have that increased moisture in the vicinity of the northeastern Caribbean and so as we head one day later to the 13th of October on Wednesday we're seeing that there is a 1004 millibar low pressure system and also uh, to the northeast of that we have a 1008 millibar low pressure system so whenever you have a decrease in pressure it usually means our systems are intensifying and another way to know for systems are intensified is the proximity of the isobars to each other. So when we have them being very tightly packed, that indicates a very steep gradient. So, so that is what we're seeing here in terms of that system. And then as we head to the 14th of October on Thursday, here we have 1000 millibar low pressure system. Again, the pressure has decreased. So it means that we have the system intensified. And so guys, fortunately, we're not seeing where GFS is expecting a very major system but also this prediction does not have to come true because things tend to change a lot we've seen a lot of changes with the model and also that area is not even marked as an area of interest by the national hurricane center not to say that it won't but we really have to wait and see because conditions do look unfavorable ahead of the system and so let's go on to icon so this is by saturday the 9th of october and so it is showing all that moisture associated with the wave affecting portions of the lesser antilles but not showing any significant development but off the east coast it is showing what is potentially our current disturbance there uh, probably getting in shape and intensifying a bit but we really have to wait and see what is going to be the eventual outcome in terms of all these systems guys so again we don't have uh, the wave that is currently there being marked as an air of interest by the National Hurricane Center but it might but of course as time goes by I will keep you updated on the latest and so guys that is really it for this update and if you found it to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can also share your thoughts with me in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as i can and just remember to always be with the wise